couple of things on the market. But um, two of them had a lot, a lot of showings this weekend. I'm expecting some offers today, so I'm excited about that. Athens that is in a college town. It's a really, really great townhome. 269.9, 9, 269 in Athens, Georgia. And then do not sleep on our mega property um, out in uh, Shamrock Reservoir. It's a seven bedroom, seven bath home, uh, 10,000 square feet. We have had a lot of activity on that property, but not a solid offer yet. A lot of verbal offers, but not something solid yet. We've got that listed at $1.9 million. All right, we're gonna keep it moving with the good news again. Uh, listen, this Friday, you guys, this is it. This is the last mastermind for 2023. This Friday, myself and Brandon Reddick are going to bring it home from homes.com. We have such an exciting, exclusive, exclusive opportunity for just the wealthy group. Just the 312 agents in this group are going to get access from an amazing offer from homes.com that nobody else on planet Earth has access to. You all will get the fast track on this. And guess what? It's going to be free. It's going to be free. So you do not want to miss being here this Friday. Um, and then let's see, uh, we will resume masterminds on January 5th, you guys. I want you to enjoy your holidays, enjoy your family, double down on your business plan, uh, double down on, you know, just your own self-paced education, pour into yourself, um, and make sure you do that. You know, this first day, drinks on me, okay? Uh, drinks on, actually, on Elite Realty Group. Calvin is sponsoring the bar and our mixer. So free food, free drinks. Listen, why are you not registered for our Wealthy Group Mixer? It will be in Smyrna this Thursday night from 6 to 9 p.m. It is going to be an amazing, an amazing time to come out and fellowship. But listen, production awards will not be celebrated until... January. I heard your cries this year, and we will not <laughs> we will not do production awards until January so that I have true numbers from everybody. Um, but I'm just so, so super proud of everybody, super happy for you all. Um, but it is time to get very, very, very wealthy. Uh, we are blessed and honored to have the EXP out of 90 thousand agents you hear me 90 thousand agents on planet earth uh at exp we are blessed and fortunate to have the number one instructor uh in the nation nolly williams has been recognized as a multiple icon he has uh he is an author he has written books he has achieved pretty much anything that you can think of on planet earth in the real estate space um, he could have been doing a lot of things because let me tell you, he lives part-time in Puerto Rico, okay? Uh, he's from Texas, but lives part-time in Puerto Rico and splits his time in Texas. He travels the globe with his amazing wife. He just lives a true life of freedom. I want that same freedom for you guys. I want you to make the kind of money that you want. I want you to live a, a spiritually fulfilled life, a wealthy, healthy life. Um, but it does start with just getting your real estate business in order. Yeah. We are blessed and fortunate to be in the business of selling earth, baby, and they not making any more of earth, all right? And that's what we sell. Real estate creates more millionaires than any other industry on planet earth. I don't care if people play ball, if they have corporate jobs, if they're entrepreneurs, they make their millions in real estate, all right? And we are blessed to be in that industry. So today, without further ado, uh, Nolly Williams, if you're out there, please come to the mic. Uh, let's see. It's Nolly. What's up? You see me? You don't see you don't see my square? What you what? All right, all right. 
Hey, Terry, thanks for, for inviting me. I, I just want to know how you get over 100 people on a, on a call on a Monday morning early. I, I don't know how you do that because I can't do it. You got 130 some people up in here. That's pretty. That's amazing. And let's get wealthy. Let's get wealthy. Well, I'm 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 super excited that you know uh, this is the same dream that I had since 12 years old uh, was that I wanted to create wealth for myself. And initially, it was just for me. It was all about me initially. And the way the Lord uh, has turned it is where where it really has been. Uh, all about others at this point. But you do have to take care of yourself first. I will say that. You got to, you know, you love your neighbor as you love yourself. You got to love yourself first. And then with that same uh, love, you can you can share that with your neighbor. So, yeah, let's get into it. Um, honestly, I have so much content and material, Terry. I don't, I don't have anything formally prepared. Uh, I've got a lot of things prepared. But um, I thought we would kind of, there's a couple of things that I want to get across, a couple of points that I want to get across that are super busy, super important for this new uh, busy season that we are going to find ourselves in. Um, and so it's going to kind of feel like a hodgepodge. I was asking the Holy Spirit, which, I'll, which is what I do when I speak, you know, I, I allow the Holy Spirit to speak to the needs of those of his, of his children that, that are present. And so right now I'm seeing a lot of different, there, there's, I'm getting a lot of messages right now. So a lot of people uh, are doing well. A lot of people are struggling. A lot of people need clarity. And so that's what, what I'm hoping to, to be here, you know, with for. So um, if you want to keep it like a Q&A, we can go that way. The, the, the three biggest things that I teach on, number one is mindset. But I got to tell you, Terry, most people don't want to hear about it. <laughs> they, they, man, I don't want to learn about no mindset. I do that on my own. Uh, the other thing that I like to teach is production. You know, I sold over a thousand homes my first 10 years in real estate. Uh, in my first 74 days in, in, in the business, I, I took 21 listings and I'm a listing guy. Okay. So if you, if you, if you're writing anything down now, if you're driving, please don't write this down. Okay. Keep driving. But if you're writing things down, listings, Put it in capital letters, listings. That's the game you're in. A lot of people haven't figured that out. It looks like the wealthy group has. Because from what I'm hearing, you guys know what's up. But listings is the game. And, and, and I, I kind of figured that out from the beginning. Um, I'm 53 now. I got into real estate when I was 33. Um, so I teach on those on, on uh, mindset. And then production, obviously, listings based. And then I also teach on agent attraction. Um, I think it's very important for us to continue to build our group. Um, I've, I've attracted over 160 agents to my front line and, um, and, and here's the, here's the key guys. You don't, don't, don't get the, the feeling that, oh, well that's Nolly Williams. He could do it. You know, some of you may have seen me before know who I am. Some of you have never seen me before. Don't know who I am, but either way, I, I will tell you, you know, I was raised in a household where I was abused as a kid. Okay, my primary motivation for becoming an entrepreneur was to get out of the abuse that I was in. I was uh, physically abused, mentally and emotionally abused from a from a young age of about seven years old. Um, my mom and dad separated. Uh, it was, uh, you know, unfortunate. And I was a very sensitive kid. My mom hated dad. And I, I happen to have the same na name as dad. I'm Nolly Alexander Williams, Jr. Same name. He's senior. I look I look like him. You know, and probably to her, I sounded like him. So she took her frustration out as a single mom on me and my sister. And, uh, you know, we were beaten with extension cords, anything she could get her hands on. Um, and she had a master's degree in psychology. And so she was able to psych psych uh, psychologically manipulate. And my big, Terry, my big motivation for becoming an entrepreneur at age 12 was I got, I knew how this world worked. And I knew that I needed to learn how to make money because <laughs> that's the only way I was going to be able to raise up out of my situation. And I did leave home at the age of 16, been on my own ever since. Uh, and, you know, I don't have kids, so I don't understand. I, I see a lot of parents that, that, that support their kids in their 20s and 30s and 40s. And that's if, if that's what God told you to do, you know, have at it. I will tell you that since I left home, my mother has sent me $100. <laughs> uh, you know, since 16 years old, I, I have I have had to make it, and I became an I, I became full time as an entrepreneur at the age of 23. So this year I celebrated 30 years without a W-2. 
I uh, made my first million dollars at the age of 29. When I was 29 years old, I was making $150,000 a month. Uh, some months it'd be 160, some months it was 200,000. Um, but it was an average of 150 grand a month that I was making by the time I was 29. And so, and that was in the music industry. So I really learned a lot of things, Terry, that I've applied that I, and, and by the way, I've gone broke too, okay? <laughs> because when I was in the music business, uh, you know, when everything went digital and that happened in the early 2000s, I didn't know how to change. I didn't know how to switch with that, with that change. And, um, and, and basically my home was in foreclosure. I don't know if anybody's been through that. I filed bankruptcy and, uh, I was paying my mortgage payment on an American express card that I borrowed from my sister-in-law. <laughs> That's how bad it was, you know? So, so we've had a lot of ups and downs and, uh, but, but I've learned how to make a lot of money and learn how to make a lot of mistakes, got those out of the way early. And um, I've learned the, the secrets, a lot, of, a lot of the primary secrets to success. So, so that's really what I want to share today. Um, there's two primary things I want to share, but before I do, was there anything you wanted to uh, throw in there, Terry? I, I don't, you know, I, could, I tend to kind of take the stage. You know how I do it. You saw me in it. You know how I do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I just want to thank you for that. You know, thank you yeah. for pushing through. Thank you for growing. You know, a lot of people don't heal. You know, we've, we've been yeah. through things yeah. as children, but as an adult, you know, you know, you, you, you didn't ask to be here, but as an adult, you have a responsibility to heal yourself. Yeah. Um, to get yeah. in positive environments and grow from that you know you all know my story you know I was an orphan I was abused I was in foster care I went through hell yeah. um but you know it took a lot of growth so I just want to thank you for sharing that um for your honesty and pushing through because uh you know you give so much and I know that's why God blesses you so much Nolly you're just a giver I mean I really feel like if I called you up and said Nolly look I'm up in New York me and Calvin are stuck Man, cash at me a hundred gr- dollars. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You just might do that. Absolutely. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Okay, so listen, Nolly, we have. I did share in our private chat, our private group. Meeting, okay. Your, your video that was in the world or in EXP, uh, YouTube on listings. Yes. Uh, because you're right, we are a heavy listing group. Yeah, Calvin and I, that's the key. Percent of our business is in the listing space. That's it. Uh, so we're always promoting listings. We have listing challenges, video challenges. Yeah. That are still centered around listings. So just know that the group, most of the group, has watched that video. Good. Good. So we don't necessarily need you to go step by step, but I would love for you to, you know, we can do some Q and A. But I just want to give it to you. I just want to turn it over to you, Nolly, and whatever is on your spirit. We're so grateful. Yeah, yeah. Grateful. I appreciate that. I appreciate and I And you did an amazing job in, in Atlanta, Terry. I, that was so good. So, so good. You kept the energy going. You kept it hype. And it was just so much fun. We, we packed it out. It was, and we exceeded expectations. I mean, it was so, and by the way, the video, um, thanks to Levi Lasik, he had his video team there, and they did the, they, uh, recorded the video so we'll be sharing that out on my youtube channel uh, very soon uh, my channel's at nolly.tv um, if you haven't subscribed you know you can go subscribe there we drop two or three videos a, a week i have over a thousand videos like, it's hard to believe terry it's just so crazy but there's a couple things you said i want to share i want to share um, some thoughts on it so i was not always uh, a giver when i when i first got when i was in the music industry um, I had I, I was doing Christian rap, and it eventually we had the world's number one Christian rap label. This was in uh, the the 90s up into the early 2000s, and we were distributed through EMI Capital. And what I what I would not do is I would not share with other pe- with my eight, with my uh, artist um, how I was being successful. I would not share with them, and the reason why was because I had a scarcity mentality. And a lot of times when you grow up, um, you know, in, in an abusive situation, uh, greed, G-R-E-E-D, greed, can set in because uh, you were deprived of something as a child. 
And so when you're deprived of something as a kid, a lot of times that can turn into greed as an adult. And so I was a greedy adult. I just got to admit it. Um, and this was in my 20s. Uh, you know, I was making millions of dollars and I, and, and I didn't want to teach people how, to, how I was doing it. But what I learned, and, and, and that whole empire came crashing down through a lack of uh, being a giver. But what I learned is that the reality is how we're wired as human beings is that we're wired in three ways. Number one, we're, we're, we're here to be. There's three reasons why you're on planet Earth. People say, well, why am I here? I'm going to tell you right now why you're here. There's three reasons. Number one, you're here to be. You know, you're a human being. So being is, you're not a human doing, by the way. You're a human being. And being is just a state of being. It's, it's an experience. You're here to have an experience, first and foremost. Uh, secondly, I mean, obviously the big overarching theme, we're here to glorify God as, as individuals. We're here to glorify God. But within that, number one, we're here to be. Number two, we're here to, to do. We do have a mission. You do have a purpose. You do have something that God has put you on earth to do. But what I want you to think about is think about those of you that have children, think about your own kids. You know, just imagine if your kid kept coming to you like, hey, mommy, daddy, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do for you? What do you want? And then you say, well, could you bring me a glass of water? Could you do? Eventually, you're like, I mean, you're not just going to keep sending them on errands. Like, look, I just want you to hang out with me. That's all. I just want you to be with me. And we have to understand that when God created us as human beings, as homo sapiens, he did not create us to work. Remember, work came by the way of the curse. You know, it came through the fall of man. Uh, God says, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread. But before that, they had it uh, smooth and easy. It was, it was ease and flow, not hustle and grind. Okay. And by the way, the natural state of man is, is ease and flow, not hustle and grind. So whoever told you the hustle and grind, that's the way the world works. But the kingdom doesn't work that way. So, so we're here to be, we're, we're here to do something uh, incredible. And, uh, and then we're also here to give. So when somebody says, hey, you're a giver, he's a giver, she's a giver, I got news for you. I got a news flash. We're all givers. <laughs> There's no such thing as I'm a giver and you're not. He's a giver, she's a giver. We're all givers. That's how we're wired. And so when you're not giving, all you're doing is basically with, with, taken from yourself. You're with, with hold, holding, withdrawing from yourself the blessing uh, because you're not walking in your natural state. Okay, so we're here to be, we're here to do, and we're also here to give. So what I want to share, I want to share a couple things. One, one other thing I wanted to share, um, and, and this is just, uh, take, take this with, with uh, so I'm a Bible teacher, okay? I've been teaching the Bible longer than I've taught any other subject. I started teaching the Bible in 1988. This weekend, I just went through, uh, I've got three folders of, of uh, Bible studies, that I've put together over the years, the ones that I've chosen to keep, and I've got hundreds of them. And uh, so I'm a Bible teacher, and so I've been studying the Bible for a long, long time, more than 30 years. And what I've come to understand from Scripture is that we pre-existed. Okay, that's not going to sit well with everybody, and that's okay. But when God went to Jeremiah, he says, I knew you before I created you in your mother's womb. Now, when you look at the root word of the word knew, he said, I knew you before I created you in your mother's womb. I pre-knew you. Okay. And then uh, uh, Paul puts it this way. He says, um, whom those he predestined, he, he foreknew. He foreknew these people. So let's look at the word knew, K-N-E-W, the word that's actually used in the, in the text in Jeremiah. Um, I knew you before I created you in your mother's womb. Well, that word is also used in the book of Genesis. Okay, it says Adam knew Eve and they begot a son. Okay, so what does that mean? What does it mean he knew Eve? Well, we all know what that means. It's a very intimate word. So what God is saying is that he, he intimately knew us before we came into this realm. Okay, so my understanding from scripture is that I preexisted. I believe that I chose to be here. And I believe that I, I'm just going to say what I believe is that I chose my mom and I chose my, my dad. Now, if you don't believe that, if you have a hard time, like, no, that, no, that can't be. Well, he says he pre-knew me, he, he foreknew me. That means he intimately knew me. Now, I don't remember that experience once I came here. But um, if that being the case, even if you can't buy that, you could probably believe that God picked 
your parents for you. Okay. Or you might just think it was random. So I've either got to, you know, so I think that I had a, I think God and I got together. That's what I think. And we, and I said, that's who I want. I want that experience. And just like when you're playing a video game, think about this for a minute. Anybody ever played a video game? Now I can't see everybody. That's making Uncle Nolly a little bit, uh, not not 100% on my game. I like to see people. You know, I see a bunch of pictures, and, and it tells me you're here, but I'm not seeing people. But I see a few of you live. So have you ever played video games? Raise your, raise your hand if you ever played a video game, okay? You ever played a video game? Okay. Do you know on video games? Okay, I see the virtual hands. So do you know on video games they have different levels? So you could choose easy, medium, or hard, okay? That's how you could choose it. And I believe that I chose the hard level. It's no problem. I, I say, uh, you know, let's put, let's go. We're going to do life. Let's do it. I want to be, I want to be born in Brooklyn, New York, in Bedford-Stuyvesant, where it's the, the, the slums. Um, I want to, uh, when I'm, in 1980, we moved to Compton, uh, South Central. We moved to South Central LA. I was 10 years old and it was tough. It was rough. It was bad. Uh, and that's where I grew up. I never completed past ninth grade. I'm just being true with you guys. Uh, I never completed past ninth grade, um, dropped out of high school, uh, got my GED, you know, after I came to Christ at 18, got my GED, because I was like, I got to clean that up. Uh, then I dropped out of college. <laughs> so by all measures, I should not be successful. Now, I love to learn. Okay, I'm a lifelong learner. I read books. I write books. Um, I just finished a book uh, from McGraw Hill called Three Hours a Day. And this is actually a science project. Um, but... But so I'm a, I'm a studied person. I'm a learned man, but I but not traditionally. OK, so I didn't go to school and learn that way. So the point is, the point that I'm making with around all this is that there are no excuses for your failure. You can't blame your parents. You can't you or you want to blame God. You can look. All you got to do is say, look, what do I where am I at? What else, what do I have in my tool belt? What's in my duffel bag? and then go to work, okay? So when I got out of the real estate industry, I got right in, uh, I got out of the music industry, I got right into real estate because when, when I was losing my house, um, I had a 6,000 square foot, foot home on 10 acres that I bought when I was 26 years old, and it's a beautiful home. Uh, and, you know, I was losing it, so I sold it. And when I looked at the commission that I paid the real estate agent, Jack McDonald, uh, uh, my agent at the time, I paid, I paid $29,700 commission on that house. And this is back a long time ago. And um, I said, this was 20 years ago. And I said, man, I wonder if I could do that. Because I really didn't know what I was going to do next. And I know some of you are struggling in real estate right now. You might even have team members that are struggling. They're thinking about going and getting regular jobs. Y'all know about them regular jobs, right? Regular, I'm going to go get me a regular job. Uh, maybe even your, 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 your family's telling you, you need to go get you a regular job. I'm going to tell you something. I've not found a job. That's the reason why I've not gone back to work in 30 years, work, work, work. I've not found anybody that'll pay me as much as I pay myself. I've not found any industry that will pay me as much as I can make in real estate. I just haven't seen it. I haven't, I have not seen it yet. And so really it's all about doing the right things in the right order, doubling down, doing what you know to, to do, filling your pipeline and getting on with your real estate game. Because the reality is it doesn't matter if they say the market's bad or the market's good. It doesn't matter because homes are always selling. You just got to change your strategies. Um, who, who remembers the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Some of y'all remember that. Okay, some of y'all remember what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, they, they took some, some mice and they did, yeah, I see the hands. They, they, t they did some tests on these mice and they put them in a labyrinth and the, the mite, and they put the cheese in a certain place and it was a very complicated labyrinth, very complicated. But eventually, once the, the, the mice figured out the maze, they could smell the cheese, they just couldn't find it. But eventually, it took them a long time, they found it, and with 100% accuracy, from the time they found it, the first time they would find it every single time because they could memorize that pattern. Well, then they would take the cheese and move it around. Kind of mean, right? Kind of cruel. They would move it around. And guess what happened? 
the, the, what happens when, when things change in your industry, things change in your life, you change your routine, your brain has neuroplasticity. So your brain starts to rewire itself. And it only takes a couple of weeks for this to happen. Okay. Your, so your brain is wired a certain way, but it can rewire. The cheese is still there. It's just been moved. And, and a lot of us are finding that out, right? We're finding out, man, my cheese is in a different place. I'm, I got to start doing probate. I got to start working with divorce. I got to start working old expires and all the other eight niches that I teach that you should be working for listings in this market. So um, that's not even what I wanted to talk about. What I really want to share with you guys is um, a couple of things. Um, thank you for giving me share permission. Uh, I'm going to share first a, um, a blueprint. Okay, you can see that, Terry, the blueprint. Okay, so this is a blueprint for what I call three hours a day. Now, what, what, what I discovered, and not just me, but scientifically we discovered that in three hours a day, okay, and I want you to write this down. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not share yet. So 90% of the things that you do in your day, this is entrepreneurs in general, I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying us as entrepreneurs, 90% of what we do every day, okay, results in about 10% of our, of our wealth. Okay. 10% of the things that we do daily result in 90% of our wealth. So what should we be focusing on? By the way, it's not just me saying this. McGraw-Hill hired me. They paid me a lot of money to write this book, okay? And we grew up with McGraw-Hill books. They hired me to write this book and do the research on it. This is research. This is science, okay? So what should we be focusing on? Obviously, it's the 10%. And the reality is for entrepreneurs, you'll only ever have two problems. I want you to write them down. You, in your business, people, because entrepreneurs come to me all the time, Terry, and they're like, man, I got a problem. I got a, I, it, look, it's only in one, one or two buckets. Either you don't have enough money or you don't have enough time. Those are the only two problems you'll ever have as an entrepreneur, okay? Outside of supply chain issues, and we don't really have, I mean, we could have supply chain issues if, if there's no inventory at all. I had a guy tell me in, in Houston, one of my cl uh, coaching clients, man, nothing's selling. I said, nothing's selling, David? He said, nothing's selling right now. I said, go to your MLS right now. Pull me a report of everything that sold last month. And he did. He pulled the report. It was like 4,200 sales, which means 8,800 paychecks got, you know, because every sale has two transactions. So 8,800 agents got paid. Some got paid twice if they double dipped it. So you're telling me you can't, you, your goal is two deals a month and, you, and there's 8,800 people got a paycheck last month and you didn't get one? I'm not buying it, Okay. So, yeah, I get the market's not what it was, but I'm not getting that you shouldn't be getting your unfair share. You should be, okay? So, so the, the reality is if you don't have enough money, that's a lead generation problem. That's it. You solve that by generating leads. You do that 90 minutes a day, four days a week. Now, if you don't have any leads at all, you have a zero pipeline, you're in timeout. You just got to get <laughs> – you, you got to get in there, you know, 90 minutes to two hours a day. Now – some people, they're spending three hours, four hours, five hours a day. That's where you're going wrong. One of, the principal, one of the principal reasons for failure, okay, those of you who have read The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy, Dr. Joseph Murphy, you know that one of the principal reasons for failure is too much effort. So some of you guys are succeeding because you're trying too hard. And I know that sounds stupid, but that's science. You're trying so hard that you're failing. If you put in two hours a day, um, 90 minutes to two hours a day on lead generation, it will solve that problem. And you might have to do that five or six days a week, but eventually to have a consistent pipeline where you meet all of your goals. And I was doing, uh, when I was in production, I did 10, 12, 15 listings a month. And I did that for 10 years in a row. Okay. So that was my production goal was always over a hundred transactions a year as a solo agent. Okay. And I had leverage, so I wasn't working that much. Did you know that there are 46, I'm just going to throw this out there. The Holy Spirit's got me all over the place today, and that's okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to quench the Spirit. I, I, hear, I hear you talking. I'm going. So 46, there's 46 different steps that happen in a transaction. Okay? It's a 46 step. If, if you've got my book, Success with Listings, you know what they are. Or you have another system, you already know what they are. Step one, you generate the lead. Step 40, you close. There's a lot of things that happen in between there. 
And then there's six steps that happen after closing. Did you know that there's only about three to five of those steps that even require a license? What that tells me is that everything else is $12 an hour work or less. Okay, why are you doing $12 an hour work? I don't understand that. Is that what you think you're worth? The reality is that the majority of the things that go into a listing, okay, we're talking listings here, can be delegated. Uh, on my team, I had a licensed assistant and I had uh, two unlicensed, which I never paid a dime out of my pocket for, by the way. Uh, that's a whole nother co training. I, I, we don't have time for that. But, but the point is, I mean, when you work smarter, not harder, that's when you succeed. That's when you get wealthy. That's when you get wealthy. Um, so, so there's very few things that you actually have to do every day and you do have to lead generate. By the way, did you know that there's only two things that would make you wealthy on a listing? Number one, generate the lead. Number two, go on the appointment. Those are two of the 46 steps. Literally, you could delegate the other 44 and you'll still have 90% of your wealth. Okay. And that's what I did. I worked it smart. Um, so, so number one, if you have a money problem, it's, it's, it's the lead generation is going to be the solution to that. Now, if you have a time problem, let's say you just, you just hitting it. You're number one. I talked to a gal, Terry, she was number one in her office. It was an independent brokerage that came over to EXP like two years ago out of, um, out of Houston area. Um, and, uh, they had over 400 agents. They had like 450, 460 agents. And guess what number she was ranked? Number one <laughs> out of 460. And I said, well, how many deals did you do last month? She said, I did 100 and whatever, 112, whatever number it was. And I said, well, how much were you working? She said, all the time. <laughs> so, so the truth is she made over a million dollars in commission. She's making over 100 grand a month, but she didn't have a life. Okay, that's another kind of problem. That's a time problem. And you solve that problem with leverage. Leverage. By the way, leverage is PST. I'm giving you a lot of information right now, but leverage is PST. The wealthy group can keep up. I know you guys can keep up. So leverage is PST, people, systems, and tools. That's what leverage is, and that's how you win the time game. Uh, people, systems, and tools, PST. People is who will do it. Systems is how will they do it. And tools is what will they do it with. That's PST. That's how you win the, that game. And by the way, the two things that you're going to focus on if you have a time problem, you're like, Uncle Nolly, man, I'm, I'm, I got no problem. I got tons of business. I just don't have no time for my family. Well, you're, that's going to be the two big picture priorities that you're going to be focused on is, number one, you're going to be focused on branding, and then you're going to be focused on leadership. You're going to be branding your business, and that's big, you know, doing your – your YouTube channel, your podcast, your, maybe your TV show, whatever things that you're doing to brand yourself, okay, uh, as, a, as an influencer. And then the, the second thing uh, that you're going to do, be doing is leadership. You're going to be focused on leadership. You're going to be uh, like, a, like there's a difference between, I'm just going to say this real quick. There's a difference between a band leader and an orchestra conductor. Did you ever notice that a band leader, if let's say you, my dad used to have a band, he was Nolly in the Ohio Soul Band. Boy, he would get down, okay? And as a band leader, guess what he had to do? He had to book the gigs. He had to wake up the, the band players. Hey, wake up. It's time to go play. He had to make sure they didn't drink too much. He had to uh, gas up the van. He had to drive the van sometimes. But you know what? That's a band leader. And some of you guys are running your teams like a band leader. And that's okay because that's a phase. But when you become an orchestra conductor, guess what changes? See, an orchestra conductor, have you ever noticed that they always have their back to the audience? They're always just facing their team, right? And they're, and they're conducting the orchestra. It's a whole different ball game. And you got, when you want to see a symphony, that's what you're going to see something that is perfection. You're going to have an orchestra conductor. And that's what I want you guys to become. If you're having a time problem, you're going to, you're going to become orchestra conductors and master branders. And it's gonna completely eradicate and solve that problem. So, so again, those are the only two problems that you'll ever have and that's how to solve them in this business. Now, let me show you this real quick. And then I think we might wanna roll into Q&A. We'll kinda of see where we're at on time. But I have a seven step blueprint for, in, in my book, Three Hours a Day. 
And the very first step is that you have to hone your superpower. Now, this is not sexy. Most people don't like it. Most of my agents don't want to focus on this. But you have to know who you are. That's the reason why I wrote chapter one specifically on hone your superpower. The, you, the, the thing is, there is not enough. People say you're one in a million. That's a lie. <laughs> you're not one in a million. You're the only one that's ever will be created. You're one in billions. Okay. You're not one in a million. You're one in billions and billions and billions. And the reality is that God, with the way God created you is that you are unique. Okay. You have unique DNA. You have a, you just a unique personality. You, there will never be another you. And so how you run your real estate practice is going to be quite different than the way that I do it. And you're going to want to understand your personality profile, whether it be the DISC uh, or, you know, the Strengths Finder. You know, you, you find out who you are and then you wrap your entire business around who you are. Okay. It's very, very, very important. And this is the reason why I see a lot of um, agents struggle and entrepreneurs struggle because they never have taken the time to figure out where, who they are, which is really the foundation that you build your business on top of. Okay. Find out who you are and what makes you tick. So it, to give you an example, my profile is an, I'm a high I on the disc, but I'm also high on the SC scale. So that means that I really test out like an engineer. That's just the way my mind works. So um, I've never met a cold call. OK, even though I sold over a thousand homes my first 10 years in the business, never cold call. But I sent a lot of postcards, a lot of letters and I communicated that way. So but I've got coaching clients that are high D's on that and they make cold calls all day and they are very successful at it. So you've got to understand where you're uh, so you have to understand where you're weak and partner with others who are strong in those areas. Let me say it one more time. That's the reason why most of the time we, we hopefully I would say we hire or not that we will marry an opposite. You're like, why did I marry that? Well, because that's how it completes you. You hire you. You basically you hire the opposite of you and you also marry the opposite of you. People say, I'm going to I'm going to hire somebody just like me. And now we got two people not getting anything done. <laughs> you hire the opposite of you. OK, that's the important thing there. So, uh, you know, that your first hire should be the opposite of you. The second thing is that you have to evaluate your business. Um, and then it goes all the way down. I'm just going to kind of go through these real quick. You balance your business. Then you delegate your business. Okay. Then you systematize your business. Now, this is a very important distinction. A lot of people think that a lot of entrepreneurs think I'm going to systematize everything and then I'm going to hire somebody to run it. That's the wrong approach. You delegate your business to, to someone that is highly systematic and then have them systematize your business for you, okay, under your direction and create your team operations Bible, which can, contains your uh, SOPs and, you know, your standard operating procedures and all that. Then you go to designing your three hours a day and then you quadruple your income. Now, let me just share this with you. The, when it comes to the two big picture priorities that you should be focusing on, whether your problem is money or your problem is time, you should not have to spend more than three hours a day on your big picture priorities. Okay. So let's say right now you don't have, you're not meeting your goals. You're not making the kind of money you want to make. Well, you should spend 90 minutes generating leads every day and then have 90 minutes carved out for going on appointments. Well, Nolly, what if I don't have any appointments that day? Well, you can do some more lead gen. Maybe you do two hours or three hours that day of lead gen. But if you have an appointment that day, you do 90 minutes but it's consistency. It's time on the task over time that produces the results. If you ever see how God operates, if you look, and I'm in Puerto Rico, I'm in my home in Puerto Rico right now. So right now I'm looking out this window, I can see the ocean. If I look out that window, I can see the mountains, okay? Now, have you ever noticed that there's a consistency to the way the ocean, the waves of the ocean, the way they come in, okay? There's a consistency to the seasons of the year. Are things, do, does, does sometimes you just get two springs or, or have you ever had three summers? Well, you get that in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I don't know about where you are, but, but just think about it. God is very consistent. There's, there's a pattern, there's an order. And when things get chaotic in your life, it's because you're not being consistent. It's time on the task over time. It beats hard work 
every time. Time on the task over time. And it's just the little bit of work that you put in every day um, that really, really yields the results. Um, with that, you know, I can go on for hours. I, got, I, I think you guys get the sense of that. Um, there's probably a couple other things that, that I do want to share with you. Number one being um, to focus on listings in this upcoming year. You really want to double down and take your business listing centric, listing centric. Um, if you, I, I've got some ideas on that. I've got a free book. I actually wrote this book for my revenue share group because Terry, I would tell them get in your lead generation bunker every day for 90 minutes. And guess what they would do? They would get in their lead generation bunker. And then guess what they'd tell me? What do I do? Ah. So when you're in your lead generation bunker, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what to do. There's three things that you, you can do. And only these three things. Okay. You can generate new leads, listing leads. Okay. Follow up on existing listing leads. Okay. Generate new listing leads. Follow up on existing listing leads. Or... Gener create and, and implement marketing plans. Create and implement marketing plans. Those are the only three things that you're permitted to do during your lead generation time when you're in your lead generation bunker, which is preferably um, sometime between 9 and 11, if you can do it. So when you talk about develop and implement marketing plans, this particular coaching call would be an example of that. Okay, you're coming to the coaching call. You're getting ideas, okay, from the wealthy group and others that are, that are joining you. And, and so, so, so that counts as sort of a lead generation time. But again, that piece of it should only be about 10%. The 90% should be generating new listing prospects and following up with existing prospects. Now, if you love working buyers and all that, and I get it, uh, my profile is a lead buyer specialist. That's my quote underlying profile. Um, you, you got to figure out why, what it is about buyers that you like, and then transfer that to the listing game. That's how I was able to start doing listings from the beginning, being the natural profile of a buyer specialist. Okay. So my group would ask me, Nolly, what do I do when I'm in my lead generation bunker? So I wrote a book called uh, Triple My Listings, 37 ideas for free, 37 marketing ideas for free seller leads. Okay, free seller leads. It's called Triple My Listings. Uh, and, and I made it available just to my uh, revenue share group. And then I, I started making it available to, to any agent at eXp. So uh, if you go to triplemylistings.com, you can uh, get the book for free. Uh, but it gives you 37 marketing ideas for free seller leads. You pay the shipping. We mail you the book in the mail. It's, a, it's an actual book. Um, so I wanted to share that with you as well. Triplemylistings.com. Now, let's see if there's any comments. <laughs> no, I've been, I, I, you know, go, ter, cut me off, Terry. Come on, bring, come in. Come no, on in no, here. <laughs> you are bringing down the thunder. You are bringing down the thunder. Uh, we appreciate you so much, Nolly. And I'm going to beg you. Listen, I am begging you to stick around with us for just a little longer. Okay. Because I do want to open it up for some Q&A. If you have questions, please raise your hand so that we can get those questions answered. If you are in <laughs> attendee mode, if you are in attendee mode and you were not able to jump on as a participant, please put your question in the Q&A and I will read that for you. Um, but we're blessed. Uh, Nolly is an award-winning author and he gave you the book for free. Just pay for your shipping. Um, listings, definitely, that's where you list to last. Um, I really found it interesting, Nolly. One of the things that we have somewhat as our little proprietary thing that we do over here uh, in the Wealthy Group is we have our um, we have our agent success guide, and it is me and Calvin's proprietary training. Oh, I love and it. And one of the things that we talk about is what drives you in your real estate business, mm. that you have to get to know you, yeah. all right? So it's a five-step, the agent success guide, it's a five-step system that we use. Mm. But before you even get into the steps in the intro, we talk about knowing your why. Yeah. And just kind of having that driving force because, you know, when you have hard times or, or those listings don't work out or whatever, you will quit on you if you don't know why you're in this space. That's and you true. Are, you That's are true. different. And then number yeah. one, 
one. What is it? Branding. Yep. Branding. So you didn't just hear it from me for the last two, three years. You <laughs> heard it from Molly. He said it right now. He said it on this call that you got to get to know yourself. You've got to understand what's driving you, what's your purpose. Because when you understand your purpose and, and you have fallen in love with why you do what you do, you will never work a day in your life. No, no. I mean, not, not at all. It mm -hmm. won't even be a three-hour work day. It'll be a no-hour work day yeah. because you are yeah. less and you will be focused and working in what I know is your God-given talents. Yeah. Talents that nobody can take from you. You're in your own lane, baby. You're zoned in Amen. on what... I gave you, and he didn't give it to me. He didn't give it to Nolly, okay? Right. He didn't give it to Chantrell. He didn't give it to uh, Tamara and, and Bridget and all these other top, top, top producers that you think are competition. We are here to collaborate. That's right. Really, you know, just, just do what you are called to do, all right? Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So listen, nobody has their hand raised, so you guys don't have any questions, but I do believe we have a couple of questions. So uh, Daisha Bagley said, you mentioned you never made a cold call. Yeah. When you are new to real estate, how do you lead generate? That's a question in the chat. So so basically when, you, when you're talking about generating leads in real estate, there's only three buckets where all the listing leads that you ever need are gonna come from. And um, I've got a lot of training on that on YouTube. So I'll, I'll try not to get too lengthy in my answer. But when I first got into real estate, um, it, basically, I'll tell you this, it's your SOI, your sphere of influence. That's your number one bucket. That's always going to be your biggest bucket. And I've got a YouTube video out there called how to get listing leads. If you look on my YouTube channel, uh, nolly.tv, how to get listing leads, it'll, it'll unpack this for like 25 minutes for you. But the short version is you've got your uh, sphere of influence, your SOI, You've got your farming, and I started with a 5,000 home farm, um, and then your niche. Your, your, the, the riches are in the niches. So I, I base, now if you don't have an SOI, and I hear people tell me all the time, Terry, Terry they, they say, well, I've only been in this market, for, you know, I, I'm new in the market, I'm new this area. I don't have a big sphere of influence. Well, I got to tell you, you know, you, you got to get out there and start meeting people, you know. Uh, I'll tell people, well, how long you been, how long you been, uh, in that area? Well, I've been here two years. Well, I mean, if you go out and meet two people at a coffee shop a day, you know, that's, you know, and you can argue that that's cold, that's cold meats. I, I don't really have any problem meeting people face to face. I just don't like calling people. I, there's something about it and it, and it's okay. It doesn't matter. You don't have to. And by the way, sometimes you have to push through and do the things that you don't like. You know, I'm okay with that too. I'm just telling you how, that I never did it. So the way I started was I started first with my niche. I did expireds. I have a whole two hour video <laughs> on YouTube that explains how I did fizzbos and expireds without ever calling the people. Okay. Um, now, if you're, if you're a high D, please don't uh, follow that advice because that advice is not for you. It's, it's, it's for those that are, I'm a shy introvert. Okay. I was probably the shyest kid in school. Uh, even though I was in theater, I mean, you take a person like, for example, Michael Jackson, uh, he was a shy, the, probably the shyest person you'll ever meet, but, but he could still rock a stage. It, 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 the, the point is, I'm an introverted individual. I'm, I'm shy by nature. And so I don't, not, it's, it doesn't fit my natural style to cold call. And so I just don't do it. Never have. Um, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. Okay. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. Um, but when you look at my, when you get my book, the uh, triple my listings, um, I've got 37 strategies in there and none of, none of them involve cold calling. None of them. Now I do teach you to call your SOI. Okay. You should have a list of at least 200 people that know, like, and trust you. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't know 200 people, you just aren't out getting out enough. Okay. You, cause it's a contact sport. You got to know people. Um, and those are not cold calls. Those are people that already know you. A cold call is calling somebody that has no idea who you are from, you know, from Adam. They've never met you before. They don't, you know, so, and by the way, when you become an influencer, you can increase your SOI. Okay. Because those are people that even though people may not know you, they know of you. Okay. You, 
they know of you. So when you become, when you start to get on social, really it's, it's really doing video. When you start doing video and showing up and, and helping people and you become an influencer and helping people that way, um, then you, you increase your notoriety and you increase your credibility that way as well. So, so don't chicken out of that. <laughs> yeah, but I never, I never did cold, I never did any, any cold calls, um, but I did tons and tons of, uh, I mean, I, I did tons of marketing and branding. a memory jogger in there because a lot of people yeah i love that I hear, I hear it too where people say well i'm new to the business and i don't have a sphere and i'm one to believe if you have names programmed into your cell phone that's right you already have a full-blown database mm -hmm. uh, and i tell people just because you're new to the industry doesn't mean you're new to earth okay that's right so <laughs> that's right that's right yeah yeah so yeah you can still bring the talents and the skills that you have. You know, I, I met a young lady who was in law enforcement um, for 10 years before she got a real estate license. I said, okay, you have 10 years of critical thinking. That's right. You have, yeah. You have 10 years of problem resolving. You have 10 years of exactly what your clients need you to have. Right. You just need to hone in on the skills that make you a better real estate professional, right? Yeah, another, another thing too, though, is you know, um, I, I'm contrary to what people believe and think about me. I'm not I'm not highly social. Uh, I'm not a very social person. Um, and I've tried it like literally, Terry, I try like I try to get into Facebook and, and, and it just doesn't call me back. It doesn't. I'm not I'm not that interested in it. And so I have people, you know, that do that for me. Um, and I, I and they tell me when I need to jump in, like, hey, Terry just sent you a message. You need to, and then I go in and answer it. But it's very specific. It's very specific. Now, my wife, on the other hand, she's very social. Like, like she's got a uh, plan in a party right now that we're going to have here at our house. We'll probably have 40 people over. Now, I'm going to tell you God's honest truth, Terry. I could live in this house for five years and never have anybody over, not even a one person. Okay. That's just me. Uh, I'm just, and, and a lot of people don't know that side of me, but you, if you have a spouse or a partner you know, and you're not social, let them be the social person and partner with them. That, that's what partnership and collaboration is all about. You know, Josie loves meeting people. Uh, when we're walking the beach, like what we're about to go do after this call is we're going to go take a walk on the beach. And, um, and she will just walk up to people randomly. And so she's very good at that where I'm, where I'm not. And so uh, you, you might have to partner up and team up uh, with, some, with your spouse or someone to help you you know, make those reach outs. But for your, for your warm people, you know, and, and by the way, I, I will say this, I have cheated where I've had my staff reach out to my uh, people for me, but I don't recommend it. It's just, but I have done it. Um, and if you're doing that, because, and here's why, here's why, Terry, there are certain entrepreneurs when I coach them, I know that no matter how many, many times I tell them to follow up with their people, they just won't do it. They will never do it. Um, I had a guy I was coaching one time, his name Andy Green. And Andy Green was doing $25 million a year, which is good. I mean, it's really good. Back then, it was like 10 years ago. It was really good back then. And, uh, but he just never would follow up with his people. So finally, he broke down. He was like, Nolly, I'm never going to do it. I don't care how much you coach me. He's paying me a lot of money to coach him and one-on-one. -on -one. And he just hired a VA, paid, I think, five bucks an hour, five or six bucks an hour, four days a week. Uh, and it was four hours a day. And his, his, uh, he went from 25 million a year production to 50 million. I watched it in 12 months just by having somebody reach out for him because he just never, he never would do it. And if you do that, you've got to have it very, very personable. So it's got to be like, hey, this is a, uh, so and so, you know, Terry asked me to reach out to you. You know, Terry just saw on Facebook that you guys got a new puppy, and that you know, uh, Sandra just graduated from college, and Terry wanted me to. You know, she's been real busy this week, but she said, "Look, you got to reach out to her, see if there's anything that she could do." And Terry this, and Terry that, and Terry wanted me. So at the end of that call, if they do it right, it will feel like they just got a call from Terry. Okay. So if Glenn Sanford, this is true. 
and and this is you know I was recruited to Keller Williams by Gary Keller, okay, and and and, and I was and that's just how it happened when I when I became the number one agent in Austin, uh, you know that year. Um, Gary's office called me. It wasn't Gary. It was his office. Okay. If Glenn Sanford were to call me right now and, uh, and he would not personally call me, it would be his assistant would call, Hey, Glenn was thinking about you. Glenn wanted me to congratulate you for making, you know, instructor of the year. Glenn wanted this, Glenn, that, Glenn, that. And when I hang up that phone, I'm going to feel like I just got a call from Glenn Sanford, the CEO or, you know, founder of EXP. So there's a way to do it. Um, if you absolutely won't do it at all, it's got to be done. Okay, you got to follow up with people, um, and you've got to you've got to you've got to do the lead generation every single day. That's that's how you do it, you know. But calling is is optional. We uh, have a system. Calling your SOI is not optional. Let me say that your top two hundred, you should be calling them at least twice a year. I like that. We have a smile dial session four days a week. That is read, led by uh, one of our amazing leaders, Michaela Evans. Um, she hosts that event every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's uh, where you know you can just join in on a Zoom. You have your cell phone, and we just really, really encourage you to call. Just yeah. Those phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and exactly. I and I would do that all day. I would just and I would I would just call my SOI. <laughs> people that know like and trust me but i have a hard time even calling them i'll be honest with you but 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 i but i do if i can call them with no agenda terry it's it's better for me so i just call like hey terry i'm just calling to see how you're doing what's going on in your life and then we're just having a conversation like there's no pressure with that and then it always rolls back to real estate and it's a good time to call right now absolutely like, you feel like if you feel like i don't like making cold calls don't make warm calls. Call people right now. And Absolutely. Just check on the Absolutely. Holidays. Absolutely. You know, just, just check on people. Yeah. Now, listen, you have really poured into us, and it's a few things that I'm going to ask of you. We want yeah. you to put your contact information in the chat. We want you to put your YouTube channel in the chat. We want to put you, we want you to put your link. If there's somebody that wants and needs your coaching right now, put it in the chat. You've blessed a lot of people today, so we want to you know, make sure that people can find you and can connect with you. And there is a reason that EXP, a multi-billion dollar company, you hear me? A multi-billion. There's a lot of brokerages out there and I'm not a hater. You know, there, there's a lot of brokerages. I love to collaborate. There's some amazing brokerages out there, but there is a reason, reason why this billion dollar brokerage sought Nolly out. And said, we want to honor you as the instructor of the year. And we're yeah. blessed to have him right here on this call. There's a reason. He is coaching and guiding guidance for agents to take them to massive success. No matter if you are, you know, novice or where you are in your career, brand new, season, whatever, he can help take your business to the next level. The one component is you've got to commit to doing the work, right, Nolly? A lot of Absolutely. people go up. <laughs> And then they don't want to do the work. They like Nolly's crazy. He asked me to do X, Y, Z. So, what would you yeah. say to those that can't be consistent, Nolly? Well, consistency is critical. I mean, if you if you um, if if you can't be consistent, you've got to get help. You know, there's there's another training that I do, um, and it's basically the it's sort of a wheel of success. We call it how to balance your business. Uh, I call it spiritual business mastery, and it's there's eight components of it. Um, it's mark, it's it's um, mindset. It starts with mindset. Then there's activities, people, systems, tools, money, accountability, and training. So right now we're kind of picking on the accountability piece. Okay. By the way, the the how I came up with this, Terry, is I used to study um, companies like Chick Fil A. How how is it that ninety over ninety percent of Chick Fil A's succeed? Whereas over 80% of small businesses fail. Well, I've deduced it down to eight. One day I'll write a book on this, but I've deduced it down to eight different uh, pieces of reasons um, that, and, and accountability is a big part of it. Um, see, franchises like Chick-fil-A have extreme accountability. They only allow certain people to, to you know, open a franchise 
And it's not even money driven, by the way. It's not even how much money you can give uh, to, or, or, or to offer up. And then, they, so basically, they, they, they're very accountable both ways. So they will look at your numbers every hour and every day. And if you're not meeting your numbers, they're gonna, they're, you're going to be on a phone call. They're going to discuss it on the meeting, on the weekly meeting. Then if you're still not meeting your numbers, guess what? Somebody's going to get on a plane, and they're going to be down there in your establishment walking around and figuring out what the problem is. And most of us as entrepreneurs, Terry, we, don't, we despise accountability. We, we became entrepreneurs because we don't want somebody else telling us what to do. You know, we're rebels in a way. But the reality is you will – every – Every successful celebrity, coach, athlete has, a co you know, a, a accountability. I have it. I've got multiple coaches. And um, you have to have that because you will not succeed. Uh, nobody succeeds alone, and you'll succeed so much further with somebody holding you accountable than you will holding yourself accountable. The homo sapiens race is just not capable of, of, now, we can at a high level. I mean, how many of you get out of bed every day? You're motivated. You're about to go get yours. You're on it. You, you're doing it. Yeah, you, you don't have to be, you know, you could even work from home and not get distracted. Yeah, I get that. But, but when it comes to your goals, you got to have somebody holding you accountable to them weekly. Um, and you can do that with an accountability coach uh, or if you have an accountability partner, somebody that you partner with or something like that. I mean, um, and that's something that we did with our group, Terry. I can share with you how we did it. We have we basically partner uh, our members up with each other as as accountability partners. Okay, uh, where they don't pay a dime, they're not having to pay me to coach them or anything like that. Um, and and they're, they're and I t I teach them how to coach each other, so that you know, basically they coach each other for free. It's kind of a quid pro quo. Um, but what I found is that when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. <laughs> Isn't that sad? You know, when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. And so, and I know that to be true because I paid, you know, I pay thousands of dollars a month right now for coaches. Um, and I listen to what they say. And, and, they've, and, and, you know, one of my coaches got me this book deal. I'm working on another book uh, called Quantum Transformation, which is all about quantum physics, which is my really absolutely favorite topic. That's that's a whole nother. We're not even. Going, I'm not even going to mention anything about that right now because uh, any anybody out there study quantum physics, um, you might actually be studying it without knowing because that all success comes from the quantum field. The quantum field is where God lives, by the way. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to bounce the ball back to you, Terry. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm 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 so far down the rabbit hole. I, I, you just got to pull me out. <laughs> no, 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 I'm loving every minute of it. I am loving every minute of it. Um, so listen, we're past that 10 o'clock hour, but we still are 123 strong. Dang. Um, yes, yes. So that tells me you are really pouring into us. You guys give some fire emojis in the chat if you're still with us. Let us know uh, that you are getting some nuggets today. You are definitely hearing something that you can implement in your business. Uh, uh, Nala, you see that chat? It, it's, it's, blowing it's blowing up. up. So I see. I see. I, I did. I did. Oh, I love you guys. I love you. I did put in my uh, my website because that's where pretty much everything Nolly lives. Nolly dot com, K N O L L Y dot com, um, and you can go in there and you can see about if you want to coach with me and things like that. I don't coach with a lot of people one on one. Uh, my coaching fees are not cheap. It's quite expensive to coach with me. Um, but most of the stuff I do is for free. I mean, it's all out there on YouTube. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the training and stuff is on YouTube. But some people are like, man, I really want to, I just want Uncle Nolly to myself. So I do offer it. It's just not, it's not inexpensive. I'll just put it that way, you know. Yes, Uncle Nolly. <laughs> okay, listen, so um, final question, final thoughts. Um, one of the things that I have truly, truly loved about exp uh calvin and i joined in 2017 okay so 2017 2018 2019 2020 2021 five years before i really started to understand and or appreciate and participate in rev share yeah um my life has changed tremendously since then 
a lot of agents don't really connect that this is the truly only brokerage on planet earth that allows an agent to build wealth mm -hmm. for ge generational wealth. Sure. Only brokerage. Sure. You came from one of the most amazing brokerages on planet earth, Keller Williams. I, I, I just really believe that Keller Williams is a great brokerage. Um, I was, I would just like for you to take the next two or three minutes to just kind of pour into us. Why did you make the switch over to EXP? Uh, when you had built something so phenomenal and been invited personally by Car uh, Gary Keller to join Keller Williams, why did you do it? And why should everybody else get involved with RevShare for their own family? If you could just share that is your final thought. Yeah, so, uh, so I've been a serial entrepreneur. I've, I've launched many businesses. And I've done, again, since the age of 12. And I've always been looking for the perfect model. Anybody out there, like, you, you, you study models and you're like, okay, I, there's got to be a better way to do this. And you kind of look and you're like, okay, yeah, I think this model's a little better than that one and so on. So I was at REMAX five years. I was um, one of the top uh, 10 REMAX agents in the state of Texas. Um, my fourth year in real estate, I became the number one uh, production-wise agent in Austin, Texas as a solo agent. I did 96 transactions through MLS that year um, with no uh, agents on my team, and, uh, and I wasn't working that much. I, I worked no Fridays. I worked no Saturdays and no Sundays. I worked, and, I, and I didn't work nights. Okay, I, I did not work nights and weekends, and I was 100. I was 96% listing-based um, in, my, in my business. And so that's when Austin Business Journal came out with a report and my name, my name was number one, and that's when Gary's office called me. We happened to live in the same town, Austin, Texas, and I met with Gary. It was a 30-minute meeting that ended up going for two hours, kind of like this one, <laughs> no. and we just hit it off. And he asked me, he said, Nolly, where do you see yourself in three to five years? I said, I, said, I see myself giving back, teaching, and paying it forward. Those are the three places I saw myself in three to five years. And he wrote it all out. I still got the big uh, paper that he wrote it out on. I still have it. And he says, why wouldn't you just start doing that today? I said, well, because it's going to take three to five years. You know how we have our stories that we tell ourselves? Like, it's going to take three years, man. What, 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 that's a dumb question. And I, I became convinced that I actually could shorten that curve. And um, so that's why I joined Keller Williams. And I was there for 10 years. I loved every minute of it. And the day I left Keller Williams, I was still in love with the company almost as in love with it as the day when I joined. I loved Keller Williams. But what Keller Williams didn't have was a model that would be able to create, you know, the kind of wealth that is residual. I, I've never seen it before in any business, okay, that, you know, outside of, you know, the direct marketing industry, I just never saw it. And so I just basically... Um, w what, when I discovered EXP, I studied the model for 100 days because I knew it couldn't be true, was what I knew. Um, and I, when I, once I realized that it was absolutely true, this is five years ago, um, I would have been out of integrity to stay where I was. Even though I loved where I was, I was out of integrity. Because how, how would I be able to look my wife in the face every day or every week knowing that there was a model out there that could do this for our for our family and future generations, and I'm still here, knowing that there's this over here. It just, I, would, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. And I actually had 100 sleepless nights before I joined EXP. And the, the, the big differentiating factor for me, one of the big things obviously was revenue share and the fact that I could become a leader, that I could lead an organization, and that I would be compensated and not from the agents. The agents would never have to pay me a dime so that I could take all of my, you know, training and different things down to the price of free. And if you're an influencer, you're a coach, you're a trainer listening to me right now, um, and that should be pretty much all of you on this call, um, you know, if you want to be able to make a big difference and not have to charge people an arm and a leg to help them, EXP is the model. I mean, last month they sent me $20,000. And I got to tell you, it, it just feels good to, to, to receive over a quarter million for, and not having to sell a house, you know, in addition to all the other things that I do in my entrepreneurial endeavors. 
it's just so essentially what exp has done is allowed me to kind of spend my time doing what i'm doing here with terry um you know terry's not paying me a dime uh she's gonna probably come speak for my group i'm not gonna pay her uh you know we're definitely u utilizing our time but we do it lovingly and freely because we're sort of like ambassadors like we what else am i going to be doing this is what i do now um, and I don't have to worry about who's going to pay me for the, for my. I don't have to hock my one on one coaching. It, it, you know, you you notice I kind of talk. You got. I'm like it's expensive. I didn't even tell you how much it was. I, I'm like don't even look into it. It's, it you, you you know, um, I mean some people. You know, it's twenty five hundred a month. That's what I charge. I used. You know, you can find a coach for a thousand a month. That's going to do great uh, one on one accountability coaching and seven hundred a month. And I say go for it. You know, people hire me when they're at two hundred thousand a month and they're ready to go to five hundred, or they're at one hundred and they're ready to go to three fifty. And I will, I will get them there. Uh, we have a six month one on one coaching program where I'm. It's it's not just coaching; it's it's consulting. But I'm not gonna. I don't spend like I don't spend my hour long talking about what things that you could buy from me. Why? Because I'm getting paid. I've got this thing from EXP. So. Honestly, I know, that's way more than three minutes. But the point is, um, they've allowed me to be a uh, to be a giver, in in a true sense and a full sense of it, and a leader at the same time. It's huge. And you know what I'm talking about, Terry? Oh yeah, I, I do know do know um, what you're talking about. And sometimes people need to hear it. From <laughs> Just listen to Terry, guys. You don't. She she's saying the same thing. Okay, just a different voice. Yeah, I think that a lot of times we don't feel like we want to ask other agents from brokerages. We don't want to feel like we're recruiting um, other agents. But you touched on something today that Cal, so Calvin and I owned our own brokerage before we came to EXP. Calvin was the broker. I was the vice president and we, you know, every time we had a closing, we didn't have a split with anybody. We didn't have to worry about franchise fees. It was all our money. But something you said that when you saw the model, yeah. you realized that you were not doing the best for your family. That's right. right? And I didn't want to see the model. I did not want to see it, you know. Right. I didn't, my, my, my buddies had to shame me into looking at it. Cause I was like, man, I'm good. The, the two famous words that people that you come to them and you talk to them, they're like, no, I'm good. And then you walk away like, wait, wait, don't stop there. That's what I told them on and on. I was like, guys, I'm good, man. I'm happy where I'm at. I'm not, I'm not looking for a change. I'm good. <laughs> and they, they, they kept pushing until they said, man, just look at it. Just look at it. That's all they asked for me. I said, okay. I already got it one thumbs down. I'm just going to look at it so I can give it two thumbs and a toe down because I already knew in my mind I wasn't. Why did I know in my mind, Terry? Because I was cocky. I was arrogant. There's no other reason. It was my ego. I know better. I'm not going to look at anything else. And uh, once I was able to get past that, simply because the guy sent me, Fred sent me a frowny face, like, man, I thought we were friends and you won't even look at you know, I said, all right, man, I'll look at this stinking video. And I did. I looked at it for 30 minutes, and it changed my life. I mean, it changed my life. I, I could not, <laughs> I couldn't sleep after that. I, it, was, yeah. it, was, it was that impactful to me. You know, Nolly, one of Calvin and I's greatest regrets with the EXP, um, we don't, you know, there's really only one regret that Calvin and I have since joining EXP, and that is that we didn't join sooner same here I'm, I'm regretful that it took me 100 days to, to research the model i mean i was talking to people that left like okay you were at exp and you left why'd you leave i mean i i, I did all the research because that's how i am i'm like an attorney when it comes and because i just i just to walk away from gary that way um it was a big decision for me and but i i was like i should have spent two days and you know come over you know what i'm saying you know, you know? there was about 4,000 agents in 2017, mm -hmm. uh, but we were approached when there were about 2,000 mm -hmm. agents, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, it yeah, was here. yeah. And, but the delivery was just really off. Sure, you know, sure, sure. Um, 
Uh, but the second time around, we were looking for something and we didn't know what we were looking for. And it just so happened that God saw fit to send a young lady Calvin's way that, you know, told us a little bit about it. And from there, we got with the right people and yeah. really, you know, embraced it. Yeah. And, uh, Amen. Yeah. I'm like you, Nolly. Uh, Calvin kind of re relies on me to do the research, mm -hmm. you know, person. So I spent literally, you say a hundred days. I think I spent four or five months. Really. Yeah. I was trying to discredit it. That's I me. Same here. I was wrong with it. Yep. I was talking to people that left that didn't get the model, <laughs> and I wasted five months. Yep. And and let me tell you, in between those five months. We did a, a ton of transactions as an independent broker mm -hmm. that in that five months, it would have been our first time hitting icon mm. at the time stocks were 88 cents. Mm. Uh, <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. But, but let's just say that, let's just say this, Terry, because, because I came when there was 16,000, but it's not too late. Why? Because over the next five years, we're going to grow to over half a million agents. We're only at uh, 90,000 now, right around 90,000. So you, we're only we're not even 20 percent built out, guys. We ate the other 80 percent of the agents that are coming, you know, the next four five, six years are going to be coming under you guys. OK, so there's still a lot of work to do and it's still a huge opportunity. Yep. Before we go, Calvin did want to share uh, right quick. Uh, we're going to give him 60 seconds and we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> My apologies, Calvin. I, I took I took your, your time, bro. <laughs> oh, no, no, this was yours. And <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I just want to throw two cent in there. And just, number one, thank you for having the, the presence that you have in the EXP world, but also mm -hmm. for coming on and pouring into us today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, one of the, I think, key things, like you were saying, the ego thing, I remember you know, having my own brokerage and saying, okay, I'm getting 100%. What? Why should I give up this? And I didn't really have the, let's say, the vision to see what was happening around me. And sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And that can be a real challenge. And I was blessed to have this woman put in my circle because I, after I joined the EXP, I almost left one time. Mm -hmm. And I ended up staying because Terry, I said to Terry, I said, well, uh, you know, I think I'm going to go back and do my own brokerage thing because, you know, we had closed the 6th Century 21 offices. And she said, well, bye. And I said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was sort of forced to say, okay, well, what is, what is, what is wait a minute here? So, but thanks God, that's why you pray for those right people to be in your circle because sometimes you just don't know and what I feared of giving up the 20%, little did I know that that was going to result in a seven-figure, you know, stock portfolio for me. Yeah. And, and, you know, so sometimes we have to give up a little something to get to the big stuff. And I, that was a lesson that I learned later on in life. But I will tell you, out of all my real estate decisions that I made, a lot of them over the 40-year period that I've been in the business, but the best one was coming to EXP. Yeah. Because none of those decisions that I made gave me five figures a month without having to work. That's right. So I, I can say that, mm -hmm. uh, and less to, to, in a sense, to we have two people in the household to just be able to master that. Amen. Terry talked about her 300 and some people. But think about this. If we can all find the Terry, because I only brought in 20 people mm -hmm. in but um, I was blessed with this lady beside me to bring in the other three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you know, it, it's so true, Calvin, because um, a, a, a good friend of mine always said one quote that I like is, would you rather have because people tell me that I got a man, I'm at 100 percent. I'm like, well, would you rather have 100 percent of a grape or 50 percent of a watermelon? There you go. And the truth hey. is. You know, I, I'll take 50% of a watermelon all day. You can have 100% of what you have, but it's, the opportunity is so big. I mean, I've got five people in India. You think my independent brokerage would have, I mean, I'm a broker also. I became a broker in 2008. Uh, my independent brokerage would have people in India. I've got, I just had an agent join me in Mexico. So we're opening that market. I mean, we've got South Africa open. It's just amazing. It's, it's, it's incredible.
Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Um, well, Thank Nally, you, Calvin, for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Nolly, I appreciate you so much. Uh, you stayed way past the 10 o'clock hour, and we are just blessed and fortunate that you did that. Wealthy group, please unmute your mic, and let's thank Uncle Nolly for kicking it with us. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nolly. And thank you for heeding the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's it. That's it. (laughs) So, uh, before we let you off, we have two quick questions. We're going to make them super, super quick. Okay. This is it, you guys. We gotta, we gotta let Uncle Nolly go. He's got to take his walk on the beach, and we don't want to stop that walk on the beach. All right. D. Renee Smith, come on with your comment question. I didn't know my hand was raised. Oh, well, you you got you. It was great great and amazing. I loved it. (laughs) Amen. Stephanie Oglesby. Thank you. Stephanie Oglesby. Stephanie Oglesby, did you have a question, comment? No, thank you. Okay, we just had some hands up. I guess they was just raising their hand, Nolly, to let you know. Yes, they was putting up holy hands, holy hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I am forever indebted to you. I cannot wait for the next time we fly out to Puerto Rico because we do come quite often. Yeah. Uh, and we can go to one of our favorite restaurants and treat you and your wife uh, on one of the rooftops there. Uh, I just appreciate you, King. I appreciate you. I thank you. I thank you for being a servant leader. Uh, and I cannot wait to come to the Uncle Nolly call and rock and it. And do it. I know. It's going to be amazing. And thank you, Queen. And thank you so much for um, just the, the, the opportunity. I mean, you, you, you reached out to me. We, you know, we got the dates you know, figured out. And uh, this is incredible. This is incredible. You got a great group. Keep doing what you're doing. Love you. Thank you. Love you, too. See you guys. Y'all have an amazing, amazing rest of your week. Uh, Let's get it popping. Don't forget, this Friday, we want to bring that same energy. We are going to have uh, myself and Brandon Reddick hosting the Mastermind this Friday. So uh, y'all get ready because we are going to bring it. We last one of the year. All right, that's it, that's it. All right, YouTube family. Like I say, that's me. I uh, did a special guest appearance and uh, with, with Terry, and that was so much fun. The wealthy group had over 100 people on, the, on that particular Zoom, and uh, so much fun. Glad I was able to live it on YouTube as well, and I'll see you soon on the next one. Adios. I'm out of here. Got to go walk on the beach after I use the restroom. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah.